Revelation 346. From the 23rd of March 1938 and the 24th of March 1938 and the 25th of March 1938. And the Word was made flesh. And the Word was made flesh. Hear the words of salvation, and give them again to all seekers. For in the embodiment of the Lord and Saviour on earth the wonderful happened the incomprehensible. That God's glory was in the being of a man, to bring light to all beings on earth and in the universe. For the state of the people was a very dark and one, the light of knowledge could no longer penetrate this darkness. That is why God himself placed his entire divine being into the outer form of a human being and gave his entire fullness of light into it, in order to illuminate mankind's greatest evil, the night of the spirit, and thereby to clear the way for the soul of man to find its way to true life. The whole universe with innumerable living beings, from the smallest creature up to the most perfect spirit being bent before the glory of God. The most sublime and perfect divine being descended to the earth in the midst of his creatures and lived like them, subject as man to all laws of nature. And for his earthly career, the same regulations applied which accompany every earthly being, from birth to death. A hard working youth in full modesty and a God fearing upbringing by God fearing parents formed the bodily human being in such a way that immediately the divine spirit united with this outer man and God in all his fullness of light took dwelling in this human body, which had become perfect according to his will. And now the Godhead on earth worked for the blessing of mankind to enlighten their spirits. No significant difference existed externally between him and his disciples. He was not enthroned as king over them, but lived as a brother among brothers. But his divine spirit filled everything around him with light and love. The divine spirit encompasses the whole universe. But he was not recognized by humans in his bodiless primeval form. No matter how willing a mind was, it was not able to make the concept of God its own. An unsolvable question was raised that transcended all human thinking. And in order to solve the question, to make this concept acceptable to humans, the eternal Godhead, the Spirit of God, the epitome of all existence and becoming, the outcome of every thought of creation, the eternal light, the Word, in a human shell on earth. And the word has become flesh, O boundless adoration of this most holy of the heavens and the earth, for it embraces the incarnation of God's infinite love for all creatures of the universe, for no being remained untouched by it. Wherever the divine Saviour set his foot during his walk on earth, their eternity opened up and spread a bright light in the hearts of people who were not yet completely under the power of darkness. Such a work of divine goodness and mercy had to radiate and pour out over the souls of those who dwelt near him. It had to come over mankind like a benevolent rain after months of drought, and everything had to breathe a sigh of relief, since there was no longer any danger of hopelessly perishing in the fire of inner distress. For this short time it was sufficiently ensured that people of all nations came close to God, because the teachings of Christ had their origin where the Lord dwelt, but were to be spread over the whole earth. One wonderful event replaced another, and the word of God came alive in many people's hearts, because the Spirit of God gave them the power to recognize. But just as evil is in constant struggle with good, so too was there a perpetual battle between the followers of the old doctrine and those of the pure teachings of Jesus Christ. And this fight was permitted to complete the work of the Incarnation. Amen.